Hey everyone, my name is Root and we're here. This is going to be week number four, I believe, of the UBL season three. And we are up against Deathly I Am and his Tennessee Trubbish. Now, spoiler alert, we had a little bit of a DC in this match and I did not feel up to live calming this. Thankfully, Deathly was nice enough to give me his side of the match. So this is going to be completely from his perspective. So of course, thank you to him and please do check him out. Uh, this is going to be the matchup here. We just go straight into team preview. Uh, he has a Needle Queen. Bronzong, Rebombi, Volcanion, uh, Aerodactyl, and the High Dragon. So it doesn't bring Mega Kangaskhan first and foremost, which is kind of bananas to me. Also, it doesn't bring a lot of the things that I was really worried about, in particular the Mianchao and the Vaporeon. Those two I was really, really concerned about kind of being able to break through, and the Mianchao just put so much offensive pressure onto my team. But uh, the team that he brings is remarkably scary, and uh, I just have a pretty specially defensive Clefable kind of meant to take on the Hydreigon because other than that, I really don't deal with the Hydreigon terribly well. Although it is a Z-move user and I do have to be wary of the Z-belch in this situation. Um, but I just have a an Expert Belt, Max Attack, Modest, Raikou, a really specially defensive um, Registeel, which is just meant to kind of um, do some early damage and get some rocks up in this matchup. I have a Life Orbed, Max Attack, Modest, uh, Autotomize, Necrozma, so hopefully that can get a chance to get an autotomize up i have enough speed to outspeed mega aerodactyl but i didn't feel it was worth it to put enough to really outspeed any scarfers so any scarfers on his team i'm gonna have to deal with in some other way uh i do have Nini heat lego here to try to deal with anita queen and then kind of do work against the rest of his team i really came very very close to bringing a speed boost Nihi lego but i ended up just going with a special attack boosting Nihi lego hopefully that doesn't end up you know biting me but uh, I do also have the Spirit Tomb, which is physically defensive, to try to m take some hits. Primarily, it was meant to take on the Kangaskhan, which um, I don't, I really don't know how well the Kangaskhan can hit me, especially if it can't power up punch up or it can't just um, get some fat returns off on me. Um, he could sucker punch me, tall heck and back, but I do have Will O Wisp on this Spirit Tomb, and it's really kind of meant to take on physical threats. But from here, I just want to get into the match. Okay, here is the challenge. And uh, again, I will be on the other side of the screen. So hopefully that'll clear up any confusion. But, um, I, I, and I do also have this playing at two times speed because we do spend quite a bit of time uh, deciding what to do in this matchup. So here's just a standard Necrozma Bronzong lead. Now, I am very specially offensive and I do pack the Dark Pulse for this situation specifically. So I feel confident enough that I can go and hit a turn one dark pulse and try to do do a lot of damage to this bronzong early on in, in the match and kind of just gauge damage here but he's gonna probably try to get up rocks that's my first assumption in this moment so now uh he does switch out and lets his hydreigon take a dark pulse and it's not gonna do much he's gonna be able to tell right off the bat that i am uh life orbed and i do kind of feel bad about missing out on that um bronzong damage because that would have been really really helpful for me in the later match but in the end, I he does. I really have to figure out what I want to switch into here because uh, I really don't have many switches into this thing, and I don't want to burn my club table too too early on. But I do kind of want to go into it right now, and I do find out from this damage that it's no boosting item, right? So at this point, my first immediate thought is that it, it has to be scarfed because it's either going to be. Uh, the amount of damage that he did was either like uh, a high roll for timid or a low roll for, for modest i don't quite know which yet but at the very least i am reasonably certain that this thing is no boosting item so immediately my first auto scarf so i have to play around this thing a little bit carefully and um but i am in a typing matchup advantage here and i can kind of dictate what i want to do here i can potentially get off a a really ag aggressive double i can try to make something happen in this situation right now and, but um i don't expect him to want to stay in and he and i'm assuming that he would be kind of forced to uh switch out here but i do go out back into the cro into the crows and he clicks u-turn so we find out right off the bat that he's not in fact scarfed and now i'm really wondering what the heck this thing could be um again i'm still thinking z belch is a huge huge possibility <coughs> But at the same time, I figured that Z Belch would have been his go-to move in that moment. So I don't I'm still kind of confused in this moment, right? 
uh, Minocrosma could have eaten, eaten up that Z Belch, and we could have tried to figure out what to do here, but now he brings in the Rabombi, and I really don't want to give up this Necrozma too, too early. I still think it has a lot of use for me in the later match. So I end up going into the uh, Nihilego because it can pretty much uh, wall this Rabombi a little bit, and he goes for a U-turn again, so he's already getting a whole lot of early game momentum against me, and it's really kind of limiting what I can do in this matchup. It... It's, it's at least putting in, in the back of my head that I can't really make as aggressive switches that I would normally want to make because of how um, aggressively he's switching around me, right? So now he goes in, in, into the Volcanion, right? And I start to do some counts and I realize that this thing could be Specs, it could be Scarfed, but um, even but if this thing is a super offensive vo Volcanion, then Power Gem potentially Oko's from here and... If it's not, if, if it's a slightly bulkier Volcanion, then I potentially have, like, a monster special defense stat, and I potentially take a Steam Eruption, which I end up taking decently well. And I can see from this Power Gem that this thing has to be Assault Vested. It almost definitely has to be Assault Vested. So that's kind of my thinking throughout the rest of this match, that, that, thing, that this thing will be Assault Vested. But uh, I still think that my Nihil Lego still has value for the rest of this matchup, and I figured if you wanted to uh, spit out another Steam Eruption... Then, my Registeel was a reasonably safe play. It, it is really specially defensive for this situation. And, um, I figured it, it would be an okay play all around. But he ends up going for the Earth Power right now. And it does a very decent chunk to me. But, uh, I will get some leftovers back. And we will see that it's not doing a whole heck of a lot. Obviously, that is very unfortunate damage. And I wish uh, I could have gotten, um, a better read on that play. But, ultimately, I just figured that I can set up rocks here. And we see that I'm faster. We see that I'm faster, right? And this is also going to be hugely important because this starts to make me think. Okay, so I start actually um, running some some calcs on this and doing some math on this right too, right? And I'm a no speed um, registeel, and my base speed is 50. Volcanian base speed is 70. So I start putting that into the calculator, and I figured out that he has to be negative speed nature, zero IVs in order to be in order to under speed a registeel. So now I'm thinking, oh, the bronzong is trick room in this situation. And that also starts to make me think that that Needle Queen could be a Sheer Force Life Orb, like, monster a sp special attack stat, um, Trick Room Sweeper. And now I start to, like, piece this team together in my head. Um, I still don't know what the Rabombi is, but it could potentially be Sticky Web, maybe? But right now, I'm starting to think that I really need to fear this Needle Queen. And I just try to get a Seismic Toss off for some damage, and I end up taking the uh, Steam Eruption, which is going to let me get off one more Seismic Toss, but it doesn't ultimately en end up mattering too, too much. Um, he's not in, really in, in a position where he could switch out because he would have to switch back in on rocks, and it's pretty much the same thing as just giving up the Volcanion right now. So, um, I'm going to click Seismic Toss. It's not going to end up mattering, except... You have no idea how I, I reacted to this in, in the moment. I was screaming in my, out of my chair that my Registeel took it on 1 HP. I was legitimately on 1 HP um, off of that Steam Eruption. And then and then it was a huge roller coaster of emotions because then I got burned. And I was like, oh, th th this burn is going to get me. But then I remember that I have leftovers. And because of the nerf in this generation, um, burn counteracts leftovers. So we end up taking it on 1 HP, and I can get one last seismic toss off. Again, not that it matters, but in the moment, it was a huge roller coaster of emotions for me. It really was. But regardless, now I have to decide what I want to bring in on this Volcanion, and I feel like my uh, Nihil Lego is going to be the best choice. Now, again, another this is uh, I have to point out again that I really, really wish that I brought a speed boosting. Uh, oh no, I end up bringing this thing in. Um, but. Regardless, I still do really wish that I brought a speed boosting um, Nihil Lego because that would have been really interesting in this in this situation, and uh, it would have put me in a really interesting position. But now I just bring in my Raikou and again, um, Max Rush Attack Modest Expert Bell, so I can just fire off a reasonably free uh, Thunderbolt. I almost went for the extra sensory in case he wanted to go into the Needle Queen. But I didn't want to reveal that too, too early. So here he's actually free to kind of bring in the Needle Queen. And uh, this was a really interesting moment as, as well because... So if this thing was super defensive, if this thing was like... Um, leftovers, like hazards, then I can potentially take a 
and earth power. And if it's like super offensive, like life orb, sheer force, like the entire kitchen sink, then extra sentry potentially KOs after after this little bit of, of rock shift. And you know, I could play for a flinch. He could also I could also expect him to want to get up hazards here and um maybe I get off a free attack. So I end up deciding to stay in and try to go for the extra sentry, especially especially I should mention because uh, I didn't have the best switches into this and if this was just max attack life orb uh then i really didn't feel comfortable giving anything up this early on in the match so i just go for extra sensory does so much damage i don't get any flinch but he does get toxic spikes up and now i'm in a position where i can take this thing out for reasonably free and uh Obviously, he had the Hydreigon in there, but I also didn't want to give him a free switch into the Bronzong either. I was primarily concerned about the Bronzong, so I end up um, going for a little bit of a, my final tech move that I have on this set. And he ends up bringing in the Hydreigon, and I end up going for the Signal Beam. And again, I max attack Modest Expert Belt, and from that range, it just straight up outposts. Now, I found out after the match that it was not Scarfed. It was um, Expert Belt, which means that... Anytime that he brought it in, I, I outspeed it and I um, get off a signal beam anyway. So I don't think that really mattered, but it just made me feel really good in the moment just to catch that um, catch that Hydreigon in on the switch and be able to kind of deal with it. But now this thing is in and I still have my dedicated physical, uh, my dedicated answer to physical hits. So I, I, I decided to go into my spirit tomb and... The Toxic Spikes is definitely, definitely unfortunate, but it does mean that uh, I can still take a hit really, really well here. And it means I can get off a Will-O-Wisp in case my thinking is that that did enough damage where he would be inclined to want to stay in and try to wear me down over time. So I felt pretty darn safe just staying in here and going for that Will-O-Wisp and no matter what, um, the Needle Queen can't really switch into it. The Rabombi is going to take uh, some chip damage and some rocks from it. And uh, the Bronzong is not going to like it. So, whatever. Will o Wisp felt fine here. But I still did kind of struggle with this moment because I did think that he would want to kind of make a play here. I don't know. I was really, really concerned. Oh, I was also running Calx and I found out that this thing is, is banded, um, which, on, which obviously really scared me in the moment, but um, I had to shore up those counts and make sure that I knew what this set was. And once I figured out that it was banded and it got burned, uh, I felt a lot safer, although this thing could still do a lot of damage to my team and it outspeeds most of my team. So actually all of my team. So it was still, I still have to manage this thing decently well or else this thing, um, if my team is weak enough, it can still go through my team, but it's burned now. And I can hopefully take some hits, make something happen here. I know that it's not scarfed. I know that my, um, my Necrozma can outspeed it after an autotomize and um also you have to keep in mind that i never found out until after the match that the hydreigon was expert belt so i'm still i still kind of think in the back of my head that i took out his scarfer so keep that in mind as well but i end up bringing this thing in just to absorb toxic spikes because i know that that's going to be not great for the rest of my team and i can double into my clefable which is going to take an unfortunate amount of damage but um this i felt took away the the toxic spikes most efficiently and it prevents my um, Clefable from getting toxic, which actually is going to... I am Magic Arc Clefable. But that actually is going to... Um, be, matter a little bit in the uh, makeup of this match. Because he ends up going into the Bronzong. And the Bronzong can still do a lot of damage reasonably well with uh, Gyro Ball. Even though Clefable is not fast at all. And um, yeah, it's just a weird spot for me to be in right now. Because... Um, I have flamethrowers, and but it's gonna take a lot of flamethrowers for him to take me out. And he has the gyro wall, which is going to be damage, which is going to be doing damage to me over time. He clicks toxic, and uh, maybe he thought that uh, because I played so carefully around the toxic spikes that this thing would not be magic guard. But I end up being magic guard, and that ends up being a dead turn for him as I can as I'm able to get some flamethrowers off, and it's doing right around 25%. I'm gonna need um, a little bit of a high roll or, or like some mid to high rolls to be able to take this Bronzong out in the long run, but. Uh, I'm confident enough that I can sit on this, that I can sit in front of this thing and take some gyro balls, um, which I probably shouldn't have been as confident in because even that does 50% to me, which is uh, more than I would like, so much more than I would like. But ultimately, it's going to be okay. Um, I can start to claw my way back by just spamming flamethrower in, into this thing, 
and on this final flame throw, I ended up getting a critical hit, which uh, probably mattered. Uh, it's super unfortunate, but uh, I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what to say about that. But uh, he ends up bringing this thing in. Um, I, I guess it doesn't matter because Gyro Ball um, brings me down pretty low unless it crits. But Gyro Ball brings me down pretty low, and then this thing, and then I, my play is always to sack this thing off to the incoming Sludge Wave, no matter what. So. Who knows how much it would have mattered uh, in the overall matchup of the game. But uh, I didn't feel great about it in the moment. I'm sure he didn't feel great about it in the moment, regardless. Um, I'm trying to figure out if there's any play other than to just snack the Clefable. But Clefable is looking to be the least valuable member of my remaining team. Although, looking back on it, that probably wasn't accurate. <laughs> that probably was not accurate even a little bit. Because um, Clefable could probably heal up on the... Uh, on the Aerodactyl, and it can potentially deal wall the Robombi because I am super specially defensive as well. So that's probably a mistake, but we're here now, and I can bring in my Nihilego because my Nihilego definitely doesn't have any value for the for the remainder of the match, and I can get off a uh, power gem, just take this thing out, and get taken out in return without affecting any of the rest of my team. But right now, I'm just honestly just thinking about how much better this end game would have gone for me if I'd uh, preserved my Clefable. But uh, I guess it's okay. I guess it's okay. Um, yeah, I end up giving this thing up, and again, it would have been a fantastic moment for me to have speed boost, uh, Nihi Lego, and here we disconnect. So here we are back to the match. We ended up trying to recreate it back to a two-two state. So it's going to be my Necrozma and my Raikou against his Robombi and his uh, Aerodactyl. We got rocks up on both sides of the field uh, because that's the way it was. Uh, he let me burn his Aerodactyl so that we can recreate that, and um, we ended up getting to this state. Um, I let him get some damage onto my Necrozma. He ended up missing a Stone Edge or two, but I but I let him get some damage off. I ended up being at a little bit lower a HP than my Necrozma would have normally been, but it's okay. We're gonna deal with it because in in this moment, my game plan is. I can Autotomize up on the incoming Stone Edge, because this thing is burned, I can reasonably take any hit from this Aerodactyl, and then um, I outspeed the Aerodactyl, I outspeed the Robombi, and Photon Geyser is guaranteed to do 75% to both of those Pokemon uh, after they take rocks and all that nonsense. So, that's my game plan going into this recreation, and uh, it definitely doesn't go that way. Uh, in the way that it play the way that it plays out so here we go we're gonna get back into the match and uh he does land the stone edge and it does get me a little bit uh scarily low but uh you can't see my hp number but uh i know from the math that i can take two rounds of life orb so i can potentially still close out this game with my necrozma still intact i got off the photon geyser photon geyser uh takes this aerodactyl out and will allow me to get one final hit off on this robombi and the robombi comes in and uh it turns out that it's a scarred robombi and uh, I'm not going to be able to outspeed it. Uh, Deathly taking a second to make his turn. But uh, we're going to find out in just a second that this is a Scarfed Robombi. And uh, it's going to be able to KO me. And now I'm really scared because my Raikou has to be able to, 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 to take this thing out. But uh, because of the Rock's damage, um, I am modest max attack uh, Raikou. And I should do 75% unless I get like a, an insanely low roll. But it is a very much in my favor... Um, move for me to go for here i'm furiously running calcs because i'm terrified in this moment i'm absolutely terrified but uh i know that i should be able to take a bug buzz and uh we were talking after this match and he was telling me that uh if he had thought about it a little bit more he should have gone for the moon blast because moon blast wouldn't have taken me out either but moon blast would have given him an opportunity to lower my special attack and he would have uh been able to take my thunderbolt potentially and uh, that would have been the end, the end of the match that way as well. But uh, yeah, that is just an insane way to end out this match. I My heart was racing. I did not know what in the world to do in this situation. I ended up winning. That's a draw for draw's sake. But man, I was so, so terrified after I saw that it was this character Rabombi and the Rabombi could potentially win the match from there. Well, it couldn't win the match because it couldn't Oko my uh, Raikou. But if I was anything but modest, if I was timid and... He was in a position to take a hit from my um, Raikou, then I would have been in an awful position, and I probably would have lost from there. Uh, ultimately, I think uh, this match was a wild one. I felt like I played it okay. I wish I had had some turns back. Um, I wish that I was able to keep my Clef on there. If I had made about heal up my Clef, 
then uh, I think I would have been in a much, much better position. If anything, uh, he would he probably would have brought, brought in his Aerodactyl no matter what. And even if my Necrozma goes down, my Clefable can heal up on the on the Aerodactyl and Clefable would have won that match from there. I wish I had seen that in the moment, but we made our way through it somehow regardless. Uh, it's going to be a very, very narrow 1-0 win and... Uh, it went all the way down to the wire. It was a long, grueling match. We got to recreate it. Our recreations didn't go great. I missed two Will-O-Wisps on, on the recreation. So uh, it just went on longer than it should have. But we got there in the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with our next GBL match, uh, which uh, was a an insane match. It was an absolute doozy of a match. Uh, I've already played it, and... Uh, it's gonna be a fun one to post, comment, and record. But I will also have more weeks of the ICBA, a league war that's coming really, really soon, as well as other things in the future. But with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll be once again out.